no shadow of doubt nothing of any sort is distracting us in this service the light of heaven is shining in our hearts it's shining on our lives I receive understanding unique, so unique that cannot be hindered Lord we give you all the praise we give you all the glory blessed be your holy name in Jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen, praise the Lord how many of us are ready to receive from God tonight praise the Lord it is a communion service, also a Bible school running at the same time. So there is a double blessing for somebody in this service this evening. Praise the Lord. So I would ask to put our hands together some more as we invite Pastor Richard. Make it bigger and bigger for Jesus. You are all that matters. Master, for this day. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you for your mercy. May your name be glorified. Lord, help us this day and cause your light to shine upon us one more time. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Put your hand together to the Lord. Better, 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 better. Are you not happy to be in the presence of God? In Jesus' precious name. Take your seat. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Uh -uh, that hallelujah is not having life. Somebody shout a bigger hallelujah. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Yes, my name is Pastor Richard. Thank God for this opportunity given to us by our Father in the Lord, Apostle, and his team in Jesus' precious name. Yes, we were together, but now, even in our house, we have a big brother. We are the who? Who stand in the shoe of the Father to take care of us. Somebody say amen. amen. So that is the privilege we have. Praise the Lord. Amen. So please, those who are not in the Bible school, we are learning together. Are we together? Yes, just raise up your hand and pray this prayer. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, that which I know not, show me. 
teach me the things that I know not. Lord, teach me. Show me the way. Show me the word. I let your light shine upon me. In Jesus' precious name. Praise the Lord. Yes, today we are in lesson 8. We are looking at prerequisite for successful leading. Successful leading. This R, sorry, this R. Are you, are you okay? Is it clear? Amen. Praise the Lord. Otherwise, the meaning of that word means the condition that must be met for you to be led by God. So, our leading, praise the Lord. Yes, this time we are looking at, this is what we are coming. Walking in divine direction. Praise the Lord. So those who are not there, we are looking at walking in the van direction. And some of the conditions that must be met before you walk in divine direction or before you are led by God. Somebody say amen. So one of these conditions, number one, you must be a covenant child of God. Shout hallelujah. Yes, in other words, God cannot lead a dead heart. Praise the Lord. Yes, in divine leading or direction, God cannot lead somebody whose heart is dead. Remember, when you don't have Christ in your heart, the Bible calls you where you are dead. Are we together? Uh -huh. So for us to be led by God, you must be born again. You must be what? Born again. We have our text in John 3.3. 3, but the one I want is John chapter 1, verse 12 and verse 3. John chapter 1, verse 12 and verse 3. That, uh, sorry, verse 12 and verse 13. The Bible says, As many are, as receive him, to them he gives them power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but born of God. Praise the Lord. So we are not born. Hello? We are not born by the will of man. No. We are born of the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. You should be very happy. Why, why are you cold now? Huh? You should be very happy. Hey, we are not born after the will of man. Eh? We are not born by flesh. We are not born by the spirit of God. Remember, whoever is born of God is born of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. We say in one of these one of the time of our prayer that Romans 8, verse 14. Eh? That eh? Well, those who are led by the Spirit of God are what? Sons of God. Yes. So when we are born of God, is when we have a heart, we have a spirit where God can lead, can direct, can minister to. Are we together? Praise the Lord. 
So, number one, for you to be led by God, number one condition is you must be born again. And John 3.3, 3, you know the story? Nicodemus was asking Jesus at night, Master, the things you are doing are more than natural. Then Jesus answered him and said, Unless you are born of the water and the spirit, that means when you are born of the word and the spirit of God, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, until the kingdom of God comes in your heart, you cannot be led by God. You cannot be directed by God. So only for those who are born of God, and we call them not born after the flesh, but born after the spirit. Are we together? Yes. Number two, condition that you must meet is you must be meek. Meek. M. 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 E. S. You must make numbers 12. Moses had this character. He was the meekest among the children of God on the earth. Praise the Lord. Whereby, what is it now we are talking about? Meekness must, must come from the heart. So a person who is meek or humble is the person that God can direct and God can lead. Are we together? So if that's why in the natural, they give us example of goat and sheep. Sheep is easy to direct. But goat, you leave it here, you'll find it there. So if you have the heart of goat, sorry, God cannot lead you. God cannot direct you. You must have a humble heart. David would say, eh? a meek spirit, a humble heart, a contract spirit, eh? a free spirit, free from worry, free from anxiety, free from other things. That is the only heart that God direct or oh God lead. Are we together? Yes. And in the book of Psalms 25, just right, you read at home. Psalms 25, verse 9 and verse 12. The Bible says, the meek will lead guide in judgment and he will teach his ways. So unless you possess the quality of meekness, quality of humility, God cannot lead you. God cannot direct you. Are we together? Yes. Then number three, condition you must meet to be led successfully is faith. Faith. Remember Hebrews 11 verse 1. Unless you have faith in God and faith is of the heart. Why is faith? Faith is of the heart. Now, unless you have faith in the heart and faith comes by what? Beautiful. GPG Makofi. Yes. Now, the Bible is talking about faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And listen, there are people who say they have faith, but they don't have faith. Have you seen a sick person? What do they want? They want to know what they are sick of. That is not faith. 
If you are sick, look where there is answer. Oh. Hello? When you are sick, don't say, how did this sickness come? Eh? What is it making me sick? No. We know the way. Somebody say amen. We know the way and we know the truth. So you look where? Where is the truth? Don't look at sickness. If you have faith in the word of God, don't look for sickness. Look how you can come out of sickness. And the way to come out of sickness, you know. Whose report do you believe? Aha. God's report, isn't it? The report of the Lord. So you believe the report. And the report say, he sent his word. And the word he sent, heal them. That means you begin to see how you are being healed. You don't see how sick you are. So those, if you have sickness, I have good news for you. That the master has paid the price. I'm not hearing you. The master has paid the price. And that one, is, that one is far from you. He has sent his word. And the word he sent has healed you and set you free to serve the living God. By faith. By faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Also speak the same. Paul is saying, we walk by faith. Uh -huh. We walk by what? Faith. That means, what is that faith? We walk by what God is saying. You remember this man was sick. Paul was sick, isn't it? And he prayed to God to deliver him. And God said, my grace is what? Good. You pick him a coffee. You are good class today. Praise the Lord. Now, don't look at the sickness. Why? We walk by? Uh-huh. So when you are looking by faith, you look at what God is saying. You are focused on what God is saying, not what you are going through. You are what you are going through is temptation. Oh. What you are going through is what? Uh -huh. and, jo and James is saying, count it all joy when you pass in diverse what? Temptation. Count it what? Joy. So if you want to be unique, you are not like ordinary. Ah, you look at what the word is saying. Carry the word in your heart. Uh -huh, and carry uh, and be saying what God is saying. God is saying you are healed. He say by whose? What has happened to you? Did you pay for it? He paid for it. So don't begin with Satan. Don't begin, begin with Satan. That, uh -huh, how did I become sick? What is it? You are going to check, go to doctor to check you. Eh? Whoever is checking you does not know what you know. Ah. Whoever is checking you will use his senses to diagnose what you are going through. Otherwise, you should have gone to the Father. He has a spare part for you. God has a spare part for you. If Japan can manufacture a vehicle and have a spare part, how much more the Father Almighty? So, connect to heaven. And get your spare part Amen. by faith. Amen. Let your spare part roll by. Uh -huh. And also, you have to know that same word is what created those organs that you are saying they are destroyed. Doctor will report to you that your organs are destroyed. Then we, you you saying, "Way I'm gone." You don't know the word of God. Your organs that are rotten will hear the voice of the Lord. And when they hear the voice of the Lord, a new life is imputed in them. And you say, I'm healed by his stripes. He has carried my sin. He has carried my sorrow. He has carried my problem. Therefore, I walk with my mentality that Jesus has done it. Somebody say amen. amen. Yes, we are going to another one, part of it. Catalyst for successful reading. Otherwise, that means factors that enhance successful leading. Number one. Number one, 
Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit cannot just jump on you. He can't just jump on you because you are born again. Praise the Lord. Amen. You must meet the condition. You must have time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Just look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, comma, and verse 27. 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, 27. Whoever desire to be led by God must be conscious that eh, God is with me. God is? Uh -huh. You know, Abraham was called, but he don't know where he was going. But he believed God. He believed what? Yes. That's what God wants you to possess. You believe God is with me. You don't need to see him. Hello? Hello? Yes. We believe what God is saying. Believe first before you see. Hello? Yes. yes. Possess the, eh, the, the mentality that Abraham had before. You remember Romans 4. Romans 4, verse 17. You read after verse 20 or 21. The Bible says, Abraham did not stagger. Abraham did not stagger at the promise of? So, we also, we have the promise of God. Where is it? This is the promise of God. Are we together? So, if you have this one, you will not stagger in your faith. You will not stagger walking with God. Because eh, he didn't stagger. He say he believed God to the saving of the soul. He, he believed God that God cannot lie. Mm. Hello? Abraham believed God. And he walked with God. He believed what? He believed God and he walked with God. And the Bible say he did not stagger at the promise. Now to us, the promise has been fulfilled. Somebody say, how? They promise Jesus will come. Has he come? They promise for Jesus will be born and save the world, isn't it? And he has been born. He has saved the world. You and me and for those who are not saved. He's then interceding for them. So, the promise has been for so what we have is the word. And when Jesus was going to heaven, the word has been fulfilled. So what we need to do, what? Walk by. Yes. Thank you. Number two. Number two, you must have a quiet spirit. You remember we were saying, you cannot tame a goat. If you leave it here, you'll get it where? Kibuye. <laughs> Ki? His heart is ever wandering. But if you leave sheep here, you'll get the sheep. So God wants us to have a quiet heart. And listen, your heart cannot be quiet if it has no word and the spirit of God. So what can quiet your spirit is God's word. So the word you've studied, the word you've heard, the word you are meditating on will bring calmness in your spirit or your heart to hear God's direction. Are we together? Are we together? Uh -huh. And God is looking for such people. If you want to hear God, you cannot go where people are. Unless you go where people are praying, like in the church now. In the church here, if you are, eh, you are attentive. And you came from your house. 
knowing that today I'm meeting him. Today I'm going to see the father. I'm going to hear what is he saying today. Eh? He will speak concerning your case. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a better amen. amen. First King chapter 19 verse 11 and 12. You know the story. It's the story of Elijah. Elijah was thinking that he could hear God in the earthquake. Sorry, it was not there. Okay, let's read it. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces the rock before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But after, but the Lord was not where? Did you hear? Are you seeing? Elijah was thinking he can get God in any in those things. He's not there. He's not in the wind. Huh? He's not in the earthquake. Where is he? He's in the still small voice. That's where you get him. Hello? That means never move by your mind. Never move by your thinking to get God. Hello? Be humble. Be meek. Eh? You will only get God. Eh? According to his ways, not your way. If this, this is a powerful prophet, Elijah was no joke. Are we together? Yeah. And he, he think that in the, eh, in the fire will get God. He was not there in the fire. In the earthquake, he was not there. In the wind, he was not there. So where he was thinking he could get God, he didn't find him. He was where? Still, small voice. That means he was looking outside, yet God is inside. Hello? Don't look it. Tell your neighbor, don't look it to the mountain. It is good to go to mountain to pray. But don't think he's there. Don't think he cannot be here. He can be here. Hello? Yes, you can even go to Jerusalem. You want to see God. But if you don't have the quality of God in your heart, you will not see God. You must have what it takes to receive God. Hello? You may not go there, but you have a heart of Christ, heart of God, heart of love, heart of forgiveness. You will get God here. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three is love, which we are talking about. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, charity, put it, that is love, these three, but the greatest of this is love or charity. Now, if you possess love, hello, you'll get God. Because, do you know why you'll get God? How many have not seen here? How many have not seen? You are quiet. You are saints, eh? Nobody has seen here. Me have seen. And my sins were forgiven. What is, what is wrong? You are quiet. Hello? Because of love, Jesus died. Oh. Because of what? Love, Jesus died. Why did he die? He died for our sin. Jesus Christ in Nazareth. Okay. Ephesians 1 verse 7. Ephesians 1 verse 7. You are very quiet. You are, you are the righteous. Eh? Because you don't want to say you have sin. Because of his love. Because of what? Hey, he forgave our sins. Huh? Do you, do you know, don't be condemning people. Don't walk condemning people. You must be as a Christian, don't walk condemning people. If God Almighty called Moses, did he tell him you are a murderer? You are not. Did he tell Moses you are a murderer? 
Did he remind him his sin? No. Why are you reminding people their sin? That means you don't have love. He called Paul, who was called Saul, isn't it? Did he ask him how many people have been killing? My people have been killing. He didn't ask him. He showed me what to do. So that same God is a God of love. Deliver God of love. God of forgiveness. Okay, let's read it. Ephesians 1 verse 7. In whom we have our redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. Praise the Lord. God is so gracious. Hey? Imagine everything you've seen, he has to wipe away with his blood. Everything that Satan may condemn you. Hello? Jesus tell a neighbor you have been forgiven. All your trespasses, all your sins, even the one from your father's side, from your mother's side, Jesus has wiped them with his blood. And he's saying, now in the New Testament, he say, your sins are remitted. That means they are not there. You know, in the Old Testament, eh, the sins were being covered by the blood of goats and bulls. You read it, just write it down, you read at home. Hebrews 9, from verse 13 to 16. In the Old Testament, the blood of goats and bulls and hen were covering the sin of people once in a year. But in the New Testament, he shed his own blood and wiped away any trespasses against you. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, he says he has blotted out huh? every handwritten contrary to us. Oh, you should be happy. Hello? Can you shout to Jesus? He say, I have blot out every, eh, every handwritten, written contrary to you. Whatever the enemy has written contrary to you, you have been forgiven. And the Bible say, we are redeemed. That means you appear before Jesus righteous, not a sinner. Somebody say amen. Somebody say a better amen. Somebody say a better amen. Can you shout a bigger amen? Yeah. Say amen. Yeah. And write this one, John 13, 34. You read at home. Number four. You must have a free spirit. For the condition you must meet to successfully follow God leading, you must have a free spirit. Hello? Yeah. Some people are called worry. A lot of anxiety. Then you want to hear God. Eh? You have worry. You have doubt. You have fear. Then you want to hear from God. He's not there. Do you know why God? Elijah could not get God. He must know he was worried. You're quiet now. Huh? He was worried. After I was threatened by Jezebel. Eh? Elijah was running in the cave, isn't it? He was running from what? Jezebel, isn't it? So in that fear and that worry, God could not come easily. So anytime you don't have a free spirit, God will not drop his word. God cannot visit a discouraged person. A person who is discouraged you are not focusing on God. You are focusing on your problem. He's not there. He will wait you. Wait until you are calm. Or he will reach you because he's a God of mercy and a God of love. But when you are worried, you don't have a free spirit, God cannot come there. You must be strong. Praise the Lord. Yes, he said to Joshua, Eh? Be strong and what? Uh -huh. Why was he saying be strong and courageous? There are a lot of battles. Tell your neighbor, my neighbor. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. And possess a free spirit that can attract 
the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Say amen. That is number four, as many, one of them, you must not walk in malice. You should not walk in malice. Colossians chapter 1, verse 3 and 8. And the one I want you to deal with is uh, get rid of anger. Get rid of what? Anger. anger. Galatians chapter 5, from verse 19 to 21. Colossians chapter 3, verse 8 and 10. Praise the Lord. Anger is a destroyer. Anger is a destroyer. Those who operate in anger can never please God. If you operate in anger, you cannot please God and you cannot hear from God. Because hey, you are ever offended with everything. And once there's offense and bitterness and anger in your heart, God cannot lead you. He will wait for you until you calm yourself. Shout hallelujah. I'm not here. This is class on the church now. Can you shout hallelujah? You know, if you're not shouting, I'm left alone. Because you're just looking at me. So when you're shouting, then I know you're with me. Somebody say amen. amen. Another one is forbearance. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Forbearance. Forbearance. Bearing one another's burden. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, 32. You see, let bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor railing really be put away from you with all malice. Verse 32. And be you kind to one to another tender-hearted, forgiving each other, even as the Lord also in Christ forgave you. Part of some of them say, bearing one another. Praise the Lord. So, we have a heart of God. Praise the Lord. That you carry some people's burden. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't be looking at mistakes on people. If you are looking for mistakes, you get them. And Jesus showed us the right way. The woman was caught in adultery. Did he ask him how many men you are? Uh, so don't carry anybody. Carry the burden of somebody. If you see somebody suffering, oh, hey, pray for that person. That's the love we have. Do what? Pray for that person. Father, touch her. Forgive her. Yet your mercy speak for her. Let the mercy of God speak for her. Praise the Lord. You know the Bible say, be careful. If you think you are standing. Eh? First Corinthians, this is 10 verse 12. Hello? Don't think you are standing by your power. Don't think you are standing by that, oh, me, I'm saved. Those people are sinners. Jesus died for sinners. Carry the abandon. Carry what? The burden. Don't look at their mistakes. Don't look at their fault. If you don't look at their fault, you are a child of God. Because God is a God of mercy. He's a God of forgiveness. He's a God of love. Are we together? Yes. Let's continue. Now, this part of it is you must have confidence in God. You must have what? Confidence. Hebrews 4. Mm, I love it. Verse 16 and first John 5 14. But John, uh, Hebrews 4 16, let's come together. It says, Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Listen, God is looking for true Christians, 
strong Christian that can approach God eh, by his word. Hello? I met somebody somewhere in Uganda. Praise the Lord. The brother-in-law came, uh, came and said, Hey, mama, even if you, I will kill you and kill my brother also. The woman said, Ah, ha, ha, ha. ah. what are we saying? She took her one jerry can full of water and some biscuit and went to the field, to the bush. After seven days, the man who threatened them was in Agakan of Kisumu. Mm. I like such people. What was happening? She went boldly to the throne of grace and claimed the help of God and the grace of God. So we were to talk to her, forgive the man, for the man was going to die. Don't take no for an answer. Approach the throne grace of God. Be somebody that uh, look at inside and look at what is God saying and approach God boldly. Hello? Yes. Whose son are you? Whose son are you? Yes. Hey, you are bought at a price. Somebody has suffered for you. You cannot die because some people are dying. Ah. Hey? Don't be cheap. Tell your neighbor, I'm not cheap. I'm not cheap. The price that brought me out of darkness is a powerful price. Therefore, I will stand by his word. And his word is true. And his word is powerful. And he will watch over his word to perform it in my life. Somebody say amen. Say a better amen. And lastly, eh, you must be obedient. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. You must be what? Obedient. You must be obedient. You must be obedient. God, let's read it first. Except Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been. No, no, not that one. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. Sorry. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. That's good. But verse 19, sorry. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 19. 18, you know of it. But 19. Yes. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It is also repeated in Isaiah 36 verse 11. Isaiah 36 verse 11. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, unless you are willing and obedient, obedient is when you can eat the good of the land. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now we are looking at sensitivity to maintain the leading. Sensitivity to maintain the leading of the Holy Spirit. Sensitivity to maintain the leading of the Holy Spirit. Because over time, we are not going to that. We are going to write it. So number one, sensitivity. You must be a devoted Christian. A Christian that is devoted to God day and night. Let's go to Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, and Psalms 1, verse 1 to 3. Joshua 1, 8. Okay. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand in the ways of the sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. But his delight, his delight is in the Lord there put the word. The word of the Lord. And his word 
He meditate it day and now look at the result. Number three. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the water that bring forth his fruits in his season and his leaves shall not wither and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That is the, that is the mark of a Christian. Now, how, where is it now? He saying he meditate on the word day and uh -huh. now in Joshua he meditate on the word day and night and he, he is keen to observe he is keen to look at the word and by that one he make his ways prosperous and have good success somebody say amen uh -huh. So, a devoted Christian is the Christian that God can lead. It's a Christian that is sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Hello? You cannot say you love God and you are worried throughout the night. Hello? Hey, you are worried throughout the night. Then you say, you know I love the Lord. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you so much. Oh, hey? But a small problem, you can't sleep. Hello? Small problem, you can? You are what? You are worried. Yet, James is saying, count it all joy when we pass through. Uh -huh. So temptation has come, uh, sleep is, uh, uh, is gone. You can't sleep. You are worried. And then at the end of the day, what is your worrying paying for? Nothing. Hello? But the Bible says, don't be anxious for anything. Eh? But in everything, that is when you are approached with a problem, present your case. Do what? Present your case. Then, do what? Seal it with what? Thanksgiving. Why? It was just a temptation. Hello? It was what? And now embrace temptation with what? Thanksgiving. Why are you thanking God? I know. I know. The price has been what? And if you don't know the way, Jesus is what? The way. <laughs> Hello? Well, who is the way? He's the way. John 14, verse 6. Is what? The way and what? So why are you worried? Why are you anxious? Because a small problem has come. You cannot let people rest. Eh, leave me alone. I'm thinking. I'm thinking my problem. Hello? Let the Bible say, call it Joe. Joy. Somebody say amen. So you must have devotion for yourself. Praise the Lord. Listen, build your life. In the secrets. Oh, we are not together now. Eh? Have your devotion in the secret. When you appear outside, that God you are serving shall begin to manifest. Hello? Yes. In your secret, what are you doing? Murmuring. Good. He gave him a coffee. In your private, what are you doing? You are counting the, the roof. Hello? You are counting the roof? No. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with what? Because why? Eh? Whoever has called you, 5 Thessalonians 5.24, whoever called you is what? Faithful. You will what? You will do it. Yes. Who will call you? Is what? You will what? So you have been promised you will do it. Why are you worried? Shout hallelujah. So have a good devotion. Commune with God. And this one you do also. Do a lot of prayer. Do a lot of what? Hey. You pray in tongues. Pray where? Okay. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. You read at home. 
Pray where? In tongues. Listen. There are things you have to know when you are praying in tongues. There are three major areas you are dealing with. Number one, you deal with the angels. Oh. <laughs> Whose tongue is that? This is the tongue of the angel. Hello? When you are praying in tongues, you deal with the angels. Then you deal with the situation. And number four, you deal with God. Listen, whoever does not pray in tongues is limited. Oh. <laughs> you are limited. There is a way. You know, when you pray in known language, even Satan hears you. If you say, I want John to marry me, I want to be married, Satan is hearing your mind. He'll go to talk to that man and change his mind. Kipiga simu mteja. Hello? Because you are speaking the language you can understand. But if you are praying in tongues, yes. Yes, you are going. 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 My friend, you will hear voices. And you will not have one tongue. You will have many tongues. Because it's the language of the angel. So if you are just praying normal prayer, you are cheap. You are cheap. They can handle you. Because they know what we say. If your son, father, thank you, they are hearing you. Then they are waiting. Number two, that man must marry me. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> you must pray in tongues. And Jude verse 1, 20 say, build your faith. Do what? Build your faith. Praying what? In tongues. He said yesterday here, you are kidnapped by men. You are from church, you are kidnapped by men. You say, leave me, leave me. That is not what to say, leave me. That is not time to pray, leave me. Say in the name of Jesus, Riba, Paraba, Shetapa. They will leave you. I don't have time because I'm not giving. I would have shown you practically. Yes, I would have shown you practically. Hello? Uh -huh. That you are, I just take your bag and pray for it and call somebody to touch it. You will not touch it. <sighs> God is there. God is what? He's there. The Lord bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's see the effects of sensitivity in the heart. There's things that you when you approach with problem, the things you're fast. You do what? You do fasting. Isaiah 58, verse 8. You'll read at home. Let's see. Hindrance to divine direction. Hindrances to divine direction. Hindrances to divine direction. Because fear is a torment. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Job 3 verse 25. Praise the Lord. Anytime you fear, fear grips on you. Now fear grips on you because you don't have enough word in your spirit man. Hello? Because if you have the word, you will speak the word. You will shut the fear. Listen, fear as a, as a ear. Somebody say amen. We see here, John 1, 12. He say, as many as receive him, he gave them what? Talk it out. He gave them what? So that power has Eh? That power is for Satan. Huh? Is it for Satan? It is for you. Yeah. Then, when fear comes, you shut Satan. Hello? He said, As many as receive him, he gave them what? Power. Over. 
and Luke 10, 19? Is it not the same? So when you are born again, you're receiving what? Over? Uh -huh. So when fear comes, you speak to fear. Not you are, hey, hey, leave me, leave me, leave me. Not leave me. Speak Jesus. Speak what? Hey, and that Jesus has power. When your soul has received power, you demonstrate that power. So fear must go. Tell it ever, fear must go. Say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of sound mind, and of love. Are we together? So God has not given it to you. So when fear comes, fear, ah, 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 this place is not for you. Hello? Even if you are walking and there's something, no, 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 no. Fear, ah, 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 ah. this place, this is a dangerous man. This is a dangerous woman. Fear, this is not a place. I'm born of God. I'm a child of God. Hey, I've been set free. I've been redeemed. I've been forgiven. I was a sinner, but Jesus has forgiven me my sin. Therefore, fear, go where you came from. I have the mark of Christ in me. I have the mark of what? So don't fear. Are we together? Number two. For you, hindrance to divine direction, you should not doubt. Hello? Have you gone somewhere that people do not believe what you're saying? So doubt is a very big problem. Is it Mark chapter 6? Verse 1. Jesus was in his village. <laughs> And he could do no miracle. Mark chapter 6, isn't it? From verse 6, 1 to 5 there. He was in the village. Yes. And he went out from whence and came into his own country. And his disciples followed him. Continue. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, From whence has this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hand? Go to verse 5. And he could not, he could there do no mighty works save that he laid his hands upon few sick and healed them. What was it? Doubt. They doubted. This is the son of Joseph. He was there. We were with him. We were carrying wood with him. Isn't it? How can he say uh, he's now doing miracle? Where? We don't know him. Praise the Lord. So doubt could not allow them to enjoy the miracle. They didn't know is this God was in Jesus. God was in him. He was the son of God. As you are now. Somebody look at him. Say, you are like Jesus. Don't you have the word of Jesus in you? And the spirit of Jesus in you? Ah. Ah. Praise the Lord. Jesus operated here on divine power. Isn't it? Yes. It's like you. Somebody is now saying, What is it? Jesus is now like you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Do you know what happened? He's saying the same power that set Jesus out of the grave lives where? Mama, why you know? The same power that raised Christ from there lives in who? Uh -huh. So that power cannot heal you, cannot set you free. As he was here. Yeah. So when he was going to heaven, he surrendered the Holy Spirit to you now. So you are the one the Holy Spirit in. Okay, first Corinthians. Okay. First Corinthians 6. 
verse 16, comma, verse 19. Hmm? You have the power. You have what? Holy Ghost in you. Jesus was flesh, but Jesus, God was in him. That's the difference. He was flesh. Oh, you don't read John 1. John 1 from verse 1. Yes, let's read it. What know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have received of God, and you are not your own? The moment you are born again, you are not your own. Somebody has possessed you. The Spirit of God is in you. Is it? You are whose temple? In other words, you are the house of God. You are the house of what? God is inside you now. Uh-huh. God is inside you. He's resident where? Yeah, so you don't need to fear. Rise up with boldness. And, and approach the throne of the grace. Eh? And receive the help in the time of need. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three. Hindrance to divine direction is sin. Sin, hindrance, breakthrough. The best one is Psalm 66 verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. The Bible says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not what? Uh -huh. So anytime there is sin in your heart, God will not hear your prayer. So what you do? You go and ask God for mercy. So sin is a hindrance. So part of sin, there's part of, they say, they are pride. Those are hindrance. Okay, let's go to lesson 10. Life of consecration and dedication. Consecration and dedication. Life of consecration and dedication. Life of consecration and dedication. Sorry for my handwriting, but Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. A life of consecration and dedication. Praise Lord. What he is talking about. You must live a holy life. A life that pleases God. A life that what? Pleases God. Let's look at John 12, verse 23 to 27. Praise the Lord. Most of the time, as Christian, be humble enough to confess your sin, even if you have not done anything. Hello? Be flexible to say, Father, is there be any sin in me? Wash me the precious blood. Father, Search my heart. Psalms 139, verse 23. Search my heart and see if there be any sin in me and wash me the precious blood. Praise the Lord. Every time you are, you are in the presence of God, have you prayed? Just tell God. Any sin you might have done without knowing, Father, forgive me any sin. Search me. Yes. Search me, O God. I know my heart. Try me. I know my thoughts. God knows you far off. 
Praise the Lord. So be somebody who is humble. Be somebody who eh, every time you repent. Some of us are very tough for him to tell you, I'm sorry. Tell your wife, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, I'm the head of the house. I'm the head of what? I cannot say I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Be humble. I say, my wife, I'm sorry. This one, I didn't do it. The way it should be. Praise the Lord. Then you'll walk with God. We walk with what? Even where you're working, wherever you are going, eh? maybe somebody has done something, say, I'm sorry. Yet, there are times you have not done anything, but eh, have that heart to humble yourself. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Corinthians 16, verse 9. Say, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole world, or the whole earth, to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein you have done foolishly. Therefore, from henceforth, you shall have war. Praise the Lord. Every time, have conscience that God is watching me. God is what? That God is me. Anytime you are serving God, praise the Lord, know that God is writing your story. The angels of God are writing what you're doing. Whether you are scrubbing this floor of our church here, eh? God is watching. God is what? You are just watching. And if you are keen enough, you are humble enough, be happy to serve God. As you are washing the floor, Father, wash my life. Wash my children. Give them a heart of God. Father, have my support, my children. Wash me. Remember my children. As I wash your church, as I serve you. Somebody say amen. amen. Say a better amen. amen. So be strong. And this time, consecration or dedication is any time. I don't know. Raise up your hand and let's see this one. Say this one after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I rededicate myself unto you. To do your will, not my will, to follow your word and to follow your spirit, to fear you, to love you, and to serve you all the days of my life. So be saying that word now and again. Wherever you are coming to church and you are dancing, the presence of God is there. Rededicate yourself to God. Somebody say, Amen. So, listen, God is marking. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you reach heaven, you'll be a mansion for you. You want to be where everybody are. You want your own mansion? Yes, On your own palace? Yes, Serve God Amen. with an obedient heart, Amen. with a humble heart, eh? with a meek spirit. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's go to reason for lack of consecration. Lack of concentration, consecration, lead you from following God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes. Live a life of faith. A life of what? Faith. Of faith. You know, whoever has an eye of faith, I'm alone now. Are you getting now? We are together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hey, so, anytime. Who is able? For the power is where? You out of this problem. Amen. And he said he cannot lie. He's not a son of man to lie. Numbers 23 verse 19. He is not the son of man to lie concerning you. So if you believe in him, switch your mind from problem and look unto him. Yeah. Paul is saying he's the author. And the finisher of my faith. You get it now? Yes. Don't switch your eyes from problem. Because the one in you. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, hey, Johnny say, oh, my little children. Hey, 
the one in you who is greater than the one. Ah, that means the problem, the one in you is the master of all. And he say, as I go to heaven, I'll put all things under. Under who? Under the body. Who is the body? You and me are the body of Christ. So everything is under whose? Your feet. Now why are you crying? Imagine. A lion is running from dog. Shame. Eh? You, Mama Mukubana, huh? is, is shivering inside the house. When the pack are too crying outside. And you say you are saved. Which salvation is that? Oh, do you know? Let me tell you. There's where you love God that you are about to hit by a car and something that's bring you back out of the car. Hello? That's the love of God. That means there's an angel assigned for you. But what keeps the angel is you must walk in the world and be obedient and follow your leaders. Hmm. Hello? Ah, you should know if you love this God, you are indestructible. Oh. <laughs> My brother. Yes, Nibona. Yes, Nani. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Are you happy? Amen. Now, be strong in the Lord. Be strong where? Because God wants to walk with you. Why is this? Eh? This Bible school is for you. God wants to walk with you. Walking in divine direction. Praise the Lord. God wants to walk with you. Hello? Because if the chief say, say fat. And David is saying, the Lord is my So if the Lord is your shepherd, it means you don't do your will. You don't do your will, you do his will. And his will, this is the will of God. And can Copeland call it the covenant? The book of what? Covenant. Hello? Yes. And now, that covenant you are going to enter today. You enter yesterday, but today you are going to go enter through the blood of Jesus. Hello? You are going to enter a new covenant. Hello? He shed his blood and he said it is finished. What was finished? He has accomplished the promise. And now, you are the one to take over. Now, you want, now, you want now Jesus to go to Nazareth. It is you to go to and preach Nazareth. You want Jesus to go to heaven? He has died. He has gone to heaven. You see, I've left you with another one like me. We will lead you to Nazareth. You are the one to go and preach in Nazareth. Amen. Jesus is not coming back to Nazareth where he was born. No. You are the, the one to go to Nazareth. Amen. You are the one to go to Kajulu. <laughs> to preach who? Bring them here. Praise the Lord. Amen. And now this is the warning I'm giving you. You cannot sit under this church and jump out. You will have nowhere and you will not be fulfilled. You are hearing me? Uh, stop it. If you do it, stop it. I'm telling you, this is altar. So if you go to another altar and you be in this altar, everything there, you will not be fulfilled because your altar is here. This is where God has called you. Even if you go there, you will not be fulfilled. You will not prosper because the angel of God who brought you in this church is here. Unless you come to the oh. Somebody shout hallelujah. Are we together? Mm. Characteristics of divine direction. I only have 10 minutes and we have through. Any time, number one, you must understand God's leading or direction always. In other words, we have Psalms 119, verse 105. 
and Proverbs 6 verse 23. Praise the Lord. God desire to walk with you. Now, the word of God is light. Is what? It's light. So the moment that light comes in you, now the, somebody's asking, I'm hearing somebody's asking, how can this light be in me? Praise the Lord. You, it cannot be in you through your power. It is in you through your belief. When you believe the word of God, eh, the spirit of God will write your word, the word in your heart and your mind. We see yesterday, Hebrews 8, 10 and Hebrews 10, 16. Isn't it? The word of God is now written in our mind and our heart. Are we together? So you only need the spirit of God to eh, stir the word in you. You understand? So when the Bible say the word is a lamp to my heart and a light to my feet. So he's talking the word you've had, then you meditate on that word. You meditate on? Yes. Meditation is what brings you closer to God. You can pray. Pray first. Then do meditation. Uh -huh. You will not reach where you are going by prayer alone. You pray, then you meditate. Eh? It means you take the word, think deeply about the word. As you think deeply about the word, the spirit of God will write the word in your heart and will send signal in your mind, and you will speak what the Spirit of God prompting you. It is a little bit hard, but you have to do exercise. Say amen. You must take exercise. Don't be reading the word and you go. You are in the house and you read the word and you, you move out. Take time, five minutes. You are not doing anything. No TV, no phone, everything is closed. Wait on him. Eh? Don't wake up like hens. After reading, you just jump out, take your bag, and you're going. No. You wait on God. Where? Say, stand still. Stand? Where? In your heart. So wait on God. After prayer, wait on God. He will speak. He has guaranteed us. If you seek me diligently with all your heart, what will happen? You'll find him. Draw near to me and I will what? He, what is he, he's talking to some people or he's talking to you? Uh -huh. So if you draw near, how are you drawing near? By doing his will. By following his word. By practicing his word. Eh? By saying his word in your heart. Meditation, part of it, saying the word in your heart. Saying the word in your heart. Bring God closer to you. Are we together? Yes. Don't read the Bible and you jump out. Hey, you've not meditated? Take ten minutes, five minutes. Yes. It's more than 40 days fasting. You can fast for 40 days and you don't know how to maintain the ear to hear God. It is a waste of exercise. We did it when we didn't know God. We could go to the mountain, fast for days until you are, you are finished. And God was not there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So take time to meditate on the word. Deep thinking that word now and again. You say it one and you roll it in, in you and the word that is in you will be stored in your spirit man. And anytime there's war, 
the Spirit of God will raise the standard. Hello? Anytime there's what? There's war. The Spirit of God will raise standard. Isn't it? Isaiah 59 verse 19. The Spirit of God will raise standard. Hello? He knows you and he knows your battle. Why are you worried? He knows you, mom. He knows you. And he knows the battle. And those battles is calling them temptation. Them? He calls them trials. Hello? So for you to overcome trials, abide in God. John 15. John 16, 23. He say, and in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily I say to you, whatever you shall ask the Father <laughs> in my name. Oh, you are in a problem. And you are asking the Father in his name. He say, will what? Ah, ha, ha. So we have a strong promise. Mm. <laughs> strong promise. That is assurance. And don't worry about your, your prayer, your, your sin. Your sin has been limited. Now when you are approaching God, approach God boldly. Because what? You have the righteousness of Christ in you. Rise on your feet. Just thank God that God is a faithful God. Hallelujah. Say, Lord Jesus, in your name, we stand. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Holy Spirit of God, seal your word in my spirit, man. Give me the mind of Christ. Give me the mind of Christ that I will always remember your word at every time. Thank you for the privilege to hear from you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Better hand clap. That was a nice school, isn't it? Yes, it went slowly and I was almost going and then coming back. But they were entering, isn't it? Yes. A lot of it is just a reminder of the things you knew. A lot of things that you knew were buried. If Satan wants to find you, he just buries what you know. And then when you look for it, you can't find it. And then you are troubled. But I see God show up for you. After this course, you'll always know what, where to go. You'll always know what to do. Because the word inside you will direct you to where you should go. As we take this communion tonight, Mark chapter 20, uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 30. Luke 24 verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at the meat with them. That was Jesus after his resurrection. After what? Resurrection. He says, and he took bread and he blessed it. And he did what again? And he break it. And what did he do again? And he gave it to them. And Jesus is about to give you his body tonight. But why is he going to give you this body? Why did he break it and do it? And then something happened suddenly when he gave them. And uh, preceding verse, that was 31, the Bible says, and what happened? Let's read it all of us. What happened? Uh huh. Yes. Lost. In your Christian life and value, you'll not be lost. Where you've been losing sight before, after this communion, you'll be seeing. Where you are getting lost by the reason of not knowing what to do and confusion, the communion will clear it up. Are we together? It will do what? Clear it up. And therefore, you'll always know where to go. May you find direction. Can I hear a bigger amen? May you find direction. One minute. Lift your voice and say, Lord, as I partake of your precious body and blood, 
open my inner eyes that no opportunity, no road, no route, nothing that belongs to me shall miss out in my life. I will get the direction in Jesus' precious name. Now pray like a student. Pray like a student. Lord, as I take your precious body and your precious blood, open my eyes suddenly that I begin to see the opportunities that have been passing. I begin to realize the direction that you've always been giving by a still small voice. You've ever missed it, but this is what will bring it to pass. that lead me to your presence, lead me to your presence, lead me to my glory, lead me to my breakthrough. I've ever missed it, but as you open my eyes, I will not miss out. purchase anything anywhere in this world. In your room, in your bathroom, anywhere. As long as you have faith, you can pray there and money will come there. Huh? Have you seen that? I've seen that. When you are truly, you know when you are not very broke, you won't pray very well. When you are very broke, you don't even know what to do next. You will pray well. When you're very sick, you'll pray faith prayer. When you still have 10,000, you say, Father, thank you, Sister Salome, and the district hospital. But when you don't have fear to go there, <laughs> even when you're saying, My Father, today I must meet you here and now, even in three minutes on the spot, your faith is lifted beyond because you can't move from your house even one step. And you get it talking to somebody. It is the, it's your faith that is the problem. See your church, see your pastor, see your apostle. I don't have your answers. Where do I get your answer? I'm talking to somebody. Hey, it's faith. Am I talking to somebody? So as you take this thing, the trouble that has troubled you can go. It depends on the faith you carry. The thing that was, was troubling you in the system anywhere, the thing can be flashed out on the spot. Lord, as I partake of it, let something happen that gives evidence. If you carry the word of God, the word of God will always give you evidence. It will give you what? Evidence. evidence. You need evidence. And Lord, if your word is true, that as they took it is when they knew. You know those guys they sat with Jesus and didn't know him. Huh? They used to see, but that day they didn't know him. Until he broke the bread and then he gave it to them. When they ate like this, he said, ah. Uh -uh. This one is the uh, this Jesus we are hearing. When he saw they were here, now getting to capture who he was, he left. Hello? Can I prophesy? Yes, sir. From today, there's somebody who has been looking for you for, for a blessing. Hmm? You like that one, isn't it? There's somebody who has been looking for you for a blessing, but they couldn't find you because darkness covered you. While you take this communion, I see the darkness evacuated. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. Some is marriage. See at your utaki, imefunikwa. And while you take the communion, it will be opened. Amen. Somebody didn't hear that one. I hear There's your money somewhere. It must be opened. Amen. Every time you go, you can't get it. But it's your money. But you can't get it. But after this communion, you will get it. Amen. I say you will get it again. Amen. Amen. 
they have just oppressed you with things. You don't get what you want. You are ever, ever, you are just struggling. This communion will remove that struggle. Amen. You don't see where you're supposed to go. You go late. You don't see, you don't understand. I see misunderstanding. I see God give you true understanding from today as a student. Amen. You'll not miss out in this class. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Daddy, we thank you for this. In the precious name of Jesus. As it was in the Bible days, so it is to now and forevermore. We give you praise because your blood and body is ever blessed. And tonight, it is blessed too. Thank you as we partake of it and quicken our breakthroughs in Jesus' mighty name. All right, come with joy. again to begin a new course. This course uh, on uh, divine direction has ended today. Tomorrow we are beginning a fresh lesson. So let's look forward towards it. You know it's public holiday, is it? So by having consulted the apostle, he directed or he instructed that we can begin the class at 10 a.m. run it to 1 p.m. And if it's possible, we have the course on deliverance finish on Friday. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because our next lesson is deliverance beginning tomorrow. So tomorrow we have our class one. Then Friday we have double lesson for three hours. And then we are done with the
the course on deliverance. So Saturday we can only come for exam. Or are we ready to do the exam on Friday? Let's follow protocol. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so we can, not, or we can come on Saturday only to do the exam, right? So the class on Friday, being a public holiday, the class on Friday begins at 10 a.m. sharp. Then we run it to 1 p.m. Then we would have done our double class. Then on Saturday, we just come for the exam. Do we maintain this for the exam on Saturday? The students in the house, do we maintain the same time? We come here at 9, do our exam, and uh, 30 minutes we are done, and then you are gone. Praise the Lord. We can maintain that time and make sure we make the best out of what we have. As I've already said earlier, I think the communication, I made it on the WhatsApp uh, group that will be dealing with new creation realities and the faith work. So don't go read everything. Just read there. The exam is not very hard. It's very easy. And tomorrow also I will give you back the papers that you have done so that you can see what you have and how you have performed. Praise the Lord. They are your papers, so don't be afraid of them. I will make them available for you. I should keep them? I should keep them? I should give them back? <laughs> so tomorrow, I will make sure the papers are available for every one of us so that we can see how well we have done. Now, as I said earlier, if you didn't do your exam by today evening, then I count that you didn't attend any class because I think uh, that's very important. Every student... We had announced the example on Saturday. You would have done your due diligence till today just to make sure you have done that. And many of us responded so well. I did exam for people until 9 on Saturday, 9 p.m. I did exam on Sunday evening. I still did exam in my office on Monday, on Tuesday, until today. I still did exam for as many who are pursuing it. So some of us, if you didn't, then... I will uh, consider you that uh, maybe that one may disqualify you from my class too. Praise the Lord. It will be as strict as that. I say this is an army barrack because you want to raise people will not be casualty in the battlefield. So you must do all the due diligence to make sure we do the right thing right here to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Let's rise up on our feet. Help me ask by you blessed today. What did they say? Praise the Lord. So, um, the chair, the class, you should give it a name so that we don't be guessing like this now. You should give yourselves a name. It will be easier. So, the chair, that is, Brother Dominic would like to 